Good morning, everybody. We start our meetings for the pleasure of the weekend. I'm going to have a mingle back and outside. Always good. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Rock and County Commissioner's meeting on uh, November 30th, 2023. Uh, in attendance, we have Major Bathroth, Deputy Julia, we have uh, Sheriff Consayas, Julia Coit, uh, Jude Gates, Chuck Nickerson, Layla Matia, Matia, Matilla. Why do I have tough time with Sammy? Uh, we have Commissioner Dadu, uh, and then we have Jim Hadley. Jim Hadley from Northwood as a as a guest. And we have former Commissioner Tom Tomarello as coming for business. That's what we have inside and on Zoom. We have um, Commissioner Boyle. Good morning. Jordan. Yeah. Uh, we have Allison Kamikowski, Superintendent Henry, um, Kathy Stacy, our registry of deeds. Um, and we have Jason Smith. No, okay. Did I forget anybody? No. Okay. So first up, we have RFP openings and awards for the posted meter release. I I think you're looking at the wrong. Uh, I'm looking at the minutes. Have, I'm sorry. No openings. I mean, we can move right to the consent agenda. Yeah. And with that, I move to approve the November 16th public meeting public minutes and the November 30th public and non-public meeting minutes. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any additions, subtractions, corrections for the minutes? If not, on the motion, Mr. Dadu? Yes. Mr. Coyle? Yes. I vote yes. Adult uh, daycare um, grant request for civic loan approval. I move to approve an adult debt medical daycare grant dated December 4th, 2023 to Silver Thorn for requested equipment. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Um, I do. Oh. Yeah. yeah uh, there's no dollar amount connected to this, and I think there ought to be. I, um, I agree. I also had some questions with respect to the dollar amount because there was um, sort of the support documentation was a little confusing. In one, it said, initially it said, it sounded like from the memo, it was a total of $4,000. Um, Two thousand for um, the yeah. the chairs, but then below there was also there were the chairs and then the cabinet, then the chair, the desk, and the cabinet. Right. right, they didn't add up. So the other thing I was confused about is um, <clears throat> it seemed like it further in the support there was reference to power lift chairs and more than one cabinet. So where did we land? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Jason Smith. Did you want to say something, Jason? Uh, from what I'm understanding, it was two cabinets and two chairs. Uh, I just have put the request board that they submitted. I can go back out to them and ask for clarification on the items, um, if you no wish. Power chairs. Uh, right. from, also, the power chairs have been eliminated and removed as they already received okay. those. So at this point, I'd move to, I'm going to move to amend my motion, and I move to amend the award of $4,000 to Silver Thorn for one easy tilt rolling shower chair, one accessible height adjustable chair, and two storage cabinets for a total of $4,000. Okay. Did you, uh, do you have a friendly second on that? Um but you have more discussion. I, I, I have a different opinion on how that should be handled. Do you want to share it with us? Or? Yes, I, I think that this should be tabled until next week, and we should ask Silverthorne to give us a better detailed uh, list of uh, the items and the uh, exact numbers that it's going to cost. When I did the math, it didn't add up. I fully support giving them the money for this uh, grant, but uh, it's not adding up. And I wanna make sure they get everything that they need, uh, but they need to give us the proper documentation to back it out, to back it up. Uh, so I would I would request that 
we table it and ask request them to give us some better documentation. And I'd second that. Okay, so the motion to table was made and seconded. There's no discussion on that. So on the motion, Mr. Yes. Commissioner Gadu? Yes. Yes. I would say that for next time. All right. Uh payroll. I move to approve the payroll expense in the amount of $1,563,212.04 for the period ending December 1st, 2023. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. And discussion? Um, I know you have an answer for us, but why are we $200,000 higher than usual? Um, I did send, well, I only sent to Layla, but longevity yeah, primarily. Yeah, we got uh, longevity 3150 discretionary bonus for all oh, the LTC right. union 64.8 union holiday payouts. Some of the CBAs have that, so 18,500. Um, holiday year end payouts, the same few unions have that going as well. So that's another 9,800. We had one employee separation payout that had a bit of holiday time that was 8,400. So that's 184,650 plus related um, payroll expenses. Thank you. I just so, wanted you to know why. <laughs> okay, so. just thank you yeah, Chuck. I that analysis mm -hmm. you know it was very helpful to get that email just because I think we all had the same question so it was nice to see that I assumed it was related to some of the holiday payout but it was nice to see it detailed so thank you okay on the motion Commissioner Coyle yes 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 all right we're at reports um Commissioner Coyle do you have anything you want to share just uh, I'll just uh, dovetail with some. Kathy Stacy announced that there was another um, big, we got a big transfer tax out of Greenland. Also, just in this month in Portsmouth, there was a six million, almost six million dollar residential condo, as well as another about four um, million dollar uh, residential sale. So, um, although all the reports are in terms of um, as it relates to us for transfer tax revenue generation, um, we are the market's the lowest it's been in a decade, but we're probably being bolstered by ongoing large transactions. Yeah. Definitely. Any, um, do you have anything, do you have anything additional? Just want to point that out. Okay, Commissioner Gardner, do you have anything? Yeah, nothing this week. Okay, uh, and I think I'm pretty much all set as well. So we're gonna go to Human Resources, um, Center for Occupational and Employee Health, Health Watch EAP contract extension. Sure, I move to extend the current contract with Center of Occupational and Employee Health Services to for on-site mental health clinician services through April 30th, 2024, as recommended by the Senior Director of Human Resources. Second motion to be made and seconded. Any discussion? Not yes, Commissioner Coyle. Allison, how's that going? You know, it's um, had a slow start, but we do have um, people seeing it, but they've been helping. They, we had two big thing referrals and they were very helpful through those referrals. Um, so I want to give them a little bit of time because we were supposed to start in January because of just the construction and finding a place. Um, now we have a little bit of an open window where they can go to the specific departments for the department. I know long-term care had said they wanted them in. And I think um, Jason Henry said they could go to one of their supervisors just to kind of identify who they are and what services and what they can provide. So I think it would be a win-win for us to just try to kind of see and balance it out through April and then reassess. Okay, further discussion? So not on the motion, Commissioner Coyle? Yes. Commissioner Gaudu? Yes. And can I yes? Uh, request the fill position for either vacancy. I move to approve allowing two individuals to hold the buildings and grounds techni technician position concurrently for a period not to exceed six weeks through an end of date of February 2nd, 2024. There are motion. Second. second. Is there any discussion? Uh, if not on the motion, Commissioner Gaudu? Yes. Mr. Coyle. Yes. Yes. Next, revised job description, facilities operation. I, operation. I move to approve a revised job description for Senior Director of Facilities Planning and IT, effective December 7th, 2023, as recommended by the Senior Director of Human Resources. 
Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion, Commissioner Badu? Um, there are a few things in here that I just would like to understand. Um, in the position summary, um, which is the first paragraph, we've uh, eliminated, ensures the highest level of efficiency, safety, and compliance in the operation of engineering and maintenance service department for the county complex by performing the following duties. That was eliminated. I'm trying to understand what the reason for that being eliminated was. Uh, that uh, language, sorry, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Allison. I apologize. That language is contained further down as part of the essential functions of the role. Um, okay. We kind of captured it down in the uh, embodiment of what is those functions that she has to be able to maintain and do. That position has to be able to maintain and do. And commissioner, it's right there. If you, after, under essential job functions, there's like the first, sentence of purple and then the second block it's it's in in that section oh yeah okay so it's really not missing okay also under uh required education and experience mm -hmm. um we're asking for a bachelor's degree instead of an associate's degree um as a requirement and i'm trying to and it says bachelor's degree in related field um this could be tradesmen that are subcontractors and might not have done a lot of education uh, of that type of formal schooling that still could be very well qualified. And I'm, I'm questioning what degree would be a degree in a related field of a bachelor's degree that we would, I wanna make sure that we're not um, making the bar too high so that we don't, you know, uh, we have difficulty attracting somebody uh, in the event that we need to, and I hope we don't need to for a long time, but um, we're, that's the existing job description. So I'd just like to know the thinking on that. Um, yeah, so this is a very high level position and I'm doing that based on what the market is, is uh, detailing out there as well and the labor uh, Department of Labor and Standards. So we also, I believe it says bachelor's degree and then it goes down and if I don't have it in front of me and I apologize, it does go on to say, if I'm not mistaken, that an equivalent education and or experience uh, would be considered for that role. So we're not dovetailing it into a specific bachelor's degree in um, the facility side of things, but we should have something that a uh, business degree could be in there as well, because there's a lot of financial aspects of things to this, but we are trying to move it up because I think the associate directors, the uh, assistant directors, I think we have, um, I'd have to go in, let me see, or I can come back to it. Uh, we have a requirement. So that's the thinking of that. Um, we're trying to kind of mirror it up uh, due to the level and the complexity of what that job means. It doesn't, but um, that's kind of where we've gone with it. And does the director hold a bachelor's degree now? Um, yes, she does. Thank yes. you for that, yes. Thank you. Okay. Further uh, comments? Uh, there was one more in the very, towards the end. You, we eliminated the ability to develop and apply strategic planning skills to advance the department. That was removed. Uh, maybe is it, is it somewhere else and I'm missing it. It seems like that's normal um, verbiage for this kind of position. I apologize. Um, I'm just trying to pull it up right now it's under required competencies about a third of the way down from the top i'm grabbing it bear with me i apologize i'm sorry what what can you repeat that commissioner um, under required competencies, knowledge, skills, and abilities, about a third of the way down, uh, it reads, and it's been eliminated from the requirement, ability to develop and apply strategic planning skills 
to advance the department. It's up, just go up to the top, it's already there. It's just okay. that where it was plugged in was removed. Oh, if oh, you go up okay. like five lines, it's right there. Okay. Thank you. I kicked the system, I apologize. <laughs> okay, uh, on the motion, Mr. Coyle? Yes. Mr. Gaudu? Yes. I wrote it, yes. All right, we're on to button heads updates in a minute. Kathy, are you there? I'm gonna go to you first, Kathy. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, you know, it's business as usual over here. That transaction that did go through again was a cash deal for thirty-three million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars cash. Thirty-three million dollars. They ran suitcases. Imagine. Yeah. Times are good. Times are good for business people. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all I have to. Okay. To say, I know that um, um, Block Five did call the, uh, to. Um, arrange to have a luncheon for staff and that's going to take place on the 20 wait a minute the 19th of this month oh, good. So I thought that was very nice I think he that probably does it for all the departments but anyway yeah. but you should know so if you want to come over and say hi come over and say hi everybody thank, thank you. you superintendent Henry good morning um Right now, the accountant salary now is like 142, which is typical around this time of year. The courts don't like putting anybody in for the holiday season, so we'll have a lull and then we'll pick back up after the holidays. Um, but what we have seen is, and we had, I mean, the sheriff's department is an uh, uptick in um, it, uh, people trying to bring drugs inside of here. Um, some good sized quantities from Suboxone and a nice size uh, of, of cocaine fentanyl mixture. So we've had an uptick on that. Um, We've been working with the sheriff's department. They were here the other day, helping us search inside the building, which went very well. Um, so that's been good. Overall, our AB unit that has been working on for with uh, Jude, her department, and um, uh, Officer Evans, we should have that unit fully up and running by uh, Tuesday or Wednesday next week, which would be very helpful because we can get people back into those uh, the um, suicide prevention cells that actually have the cameras in it, those kinds of things. So. Staff's looking forward to that because we have some people that belong in those areas. And beyond that, that's, you know, getting through the holiday season. Next week, I think we have a little holiday party here for uh, command staff up here, a little Yankee swap. And we have some things for the staff to give out a little towards Christmas. So that's what we got going on. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Jason Smith. Morning. Good morning, commissioners. Um, we have uh, a few <clears throat> COVID cases and few staff with flu, um, and uh, but overall we're we're, we're maintaining well. Um, uh, our infection prevention protocols um, are mitigating and controlling any further spread. Uh, la let's see. Last Thursday we had our COVID clinic. We had 23 staff members receive the COVID vaccination, um, and we'll probably have another one um, coming up uh, next month as well. More information will come around that. Glendale Dining Services has hired a new general manager. Um, Elena uh, has started this week, and so I'm very happy to have some leadership and guidance in that department once again. Um, moving forward, we have uh, our annual Stericycle um, training on um, infection prevention and standards, uh, OSHA standards for um, CMS guidance. So we'll be doing that uh, today. Uh, we have our mock survey taking place in our assisted living community. Uh, we're waiting for final report on that. Uh, so we look forward to um, our results. In addition to that, we had our risk uh, uh, assessment completed by Pendulum Risk Management Services. The overall uh, the assessment went very well, a few recommendations, and we're waiting for final report. I also provided you with our employee newsletter and this week's board report and our um, community outreach for family members and individuals on our wait list. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Mayor Allison. Um, good morning. Um, I've been working with the two unions uh, for negotiation stock dates. Uh, our recognition items uh, through the opera funds are out through December. Um, the push for evaluations, the outstanding ones have, thank you everybody for um, um, heating um, and trying to get those evaluations into us. 
any December evaluations must be into the department by the 15th so that can, we can process them before year end. So um, if anybody still has any outstanding evaluations that go back beyond November, um, we need those in there by tomorrow. Um, I've worked on four or five personnel matters that are we're dealing with. Uh, we're revising the vaccination policy with Lisa Hewitt, Jason, Kim Cataldo. Um, we're preparing now HR for our insurance utilization review that'll take place on January 18th with Gallagher um, and the um, wellness gifts to the employees that will be going out. The beanie hats or caps um, will should be coming in the end of this week or the first of next week, and we'll distribute them to all departments on December 18th. Thank you. Good, thank you, Alan. Uh, I'm going to go to Jude Gates. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> All's well in facilities. We are busy as usual. Um, not a lot new to report. We have um, DES has hired an entity to come out. US EPA is doing a, a huge review about um, lead in piping. Yeah. It, about 10 years ago, they did a lot with solder and fixtures, and now they're doing piping. So we're meeting with them tomorrow to find out what their expectations are for us. Um, as Jason noted, the jail is, is wrapping up very nicely. Our annual fire alarm testing, my apologies to everyone who's been listening to it for two weeks, <laughs> is also wrapping up. Um, there were a few findings. We have um, a number of heat detectors that are aging out, so it's probably gonna be a project we're looking at for next year. Um, as far as the <laughs> goes, the, by all accounts, the, the well testing went very well. DES was here Friday. Seemed very satisfied. They wrapped up the test on Monday, did final final um, water samples for us and the neighbors, and we're just going to wait for direction from DES now. We did hear from DOT this week. Oh. Um, they just had a few small questions remaining with regard to that driveway, so that is finally moving as well. We'd really like that to be in place for for winter to get the stuff, you know. In, uh, an easier route for the materials to be moved in. Other than that, I, I thank you for allowing us to have two people filling that ground slot for a few weeks. Yeah. Um, the, the outgoing employee has been with us for 40 years Wow. and um, just absolutely does everything on autopilot. It's not even like you could say, hey, this is what he used to do because he's just been doing it for so long. So I think it'll be really valuable to have someone shadowing him. Yeah for you know a few weeks and get him up to speed i'm, I'm hoping he may, may stay with us for maybe a day a week per diem going forward yeah. because that's one of those jobs where every season has a different assignment so um other than that we're doing well getting ready for the holidays as well good. thank you okay. sure thank you, um <clears throat> busy as usual surprise um <laughs> thank you to I'm make a t-shirt <laughs> busy as usual uh, thank you to the, the folks in my department involved in payroll processing because there are lots of things that went through the payroll um, this time around, um, as we already covered them. <laughs> um, and also, uh, lots of work still continue as far as the uh, Kronos Workforce Central transition to um, UKG Chrome Dimensions. Um, we should so be up and running by January. Well, what will happen is that middle of uh, January, we'll start having um, employees punch and we'll be training that will be given. Um, obviously, um, those individuals are actually going to, being front end users, won't see as much of a change as those of us who are working behind the scenes, mm -hmm. working on processing whether benefits or payroll itself. Um, we are going to be setting up meetings with uh, department heads and those payroll letters um, pretty soon because they have to get familiar with how it might work for entering in schedules or changing schedules or doing transfer rules for you know, time cards or what have you. So uh, that training will be rolled, up, rolled out before we do more of the um, rank and file kind of uh, individuals. So we really just have to worry about using the time clock. What does the new app go look like? Because the new app actually has lots of nice features on it and it looks better than the current one as well. Um, so there, that's, and then the the target date is April, I'm sorry, February 1st and later frame check dates will be processed with UKG price. So that's the, the reason why the punches happen, obviously, is that our, our that pay period for the first by the payroll in February starts about mid-January. So, and just overall the normal grant busyness, we still don't have 
any sort of draft agreement even from for that um pilot program grant from DHHS. They still and then they came back recently saying if there's some other costs or items we wanted to try to get included in yeah. there. And we had further questions about that, what's truly eligible that they're going to allow us to put in and they haven't come back yet with so, responses. So on that particular point, there was a very good article in the union leader that the state is being sued for this home health care thing because of uh, staffing that they can't get. So they're being sued currently. And I'm, I, I just noticed the article that I was a little bit taken aback because the last thing that I want to see is the county getting sued. But anyway, just keep us posted as the when that program comes. Yeah, that was, that was just pointing that that's still been in limbo. I think we're very close to actually getting the official award from the New Hampshire DES on the cyber um, program, oh, yeah. cyber grant. Uh, there was just one last thing that they asked for, for like a workers' comp cert certificate and things for self-insured. We don't have such a thing. So basically a statement just had to be provided saying that we're self-insured, which New Hampshire DOL already knows, um, and that we have excess workers' comp coverage, which they were already provided with the certificate for. Yeah. But So hopefully very soon we should have the final agreement for that and get the dollars in and then Robin can work on doing the purchasing for that as far as for the water, wastewater, cybersecurity. All right. All right. But uh, that said, we too also have a small holiday party uh, in Yankee Swap uh, next week. So, and that's, I'm, I'm good. Sure. Yes, you are. Good morning. Um, dispatch, we're getting there. So we do have one application in. Uh, he's from out of state. It's experienced dispatcher. It's just the timing of when he can Hope you come to work for us, but we're it's a lot of hard work by the by the county, you know, with all the PR and marketing and everything else. But it's looking very well so in this. In will, this he, will he fall? Uh, if, well, if, if, if if the ones that we have currently have start dates and conditional offices on make it entirely through training, and then this out of state individual, uh, which they're expecting to move here in yeah. about March, yeah. uh, that would put us at full staff. Oh, that's nice. For so that should be the first time in a lot for you having right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So then, while well, we wait, like I said, we're waiting for this other one to come in from out of state, but it's probably going to yeah. be probably a couple months. Mm -hmm. But yeah. still, I yeah. mean, we're we're getting there, and I really appreciate all the help that all you county commissioners gave, the all you you know gave us the you know the help to get this fully staffed. Um, we continue to be extremely busy in our drug unit. Um, um, when it comes to the jail, we did do a help the jail with the sweep the other day. Um, it's good that that corrections and the sheriff's office get along. Um, we had a meeting the other day with them. Um, it's extremely important that both our agencies work together as a team. I think we get better results. Um, we had um, Jason and his major uh, came to a Rockland County uh, chief's meeting the other day with us um, to get, you know, just get in tune with what's going on with the county. Uh, but it's, 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 it, you know, we have a great superintendent over there. He does a great job and he look, really looks out for, for the county. And it's just really, it's really nice to come to work every day and, and we're, everybody's just getting along so well in this county. Um, We've been assisting a lot of uh, local police departments. We were in Salem last night from four to eight. We didn't pull you over, see you, but appreciate that. <laughs> but um, this time, <laughs> but they, they had a meeting. They asked the couple for them. We've been helping a lot of other towns uh, so they can have their Christmas parties and stuff. So we put out uh, for them to oh, yes. actually, uh, the town's going to help us out um, for uh, a Christmas thing that we're doing. But it's it's nice that we're all working together with law enforcement. Okay. Only other thing is we'll wait for January on transport. We'll see the fire alarms. Um, and we'll wait for January on. We know we're going to be extremely busy in January when once this new, these new laws go into effect. Otherwise than that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Just one note. I, you may have seen in the news there was an article regarding. Um, a case out of New York where they actually found a recovered and recovered the body that was disposed of in New Hampshire. Uh, one of our deputies on our major offenders task force was a part of that task force that uh, resulted in the investigation of those people being charged with the murder of that individual and the recovering of their body. 
Fine. So we're ready to wait. That's good. Thank you. Uh, Jim, do you have anything? I'm going to ask you because you're here. No, I don't think you're you. Mm -hmm. Layla, you have anything? I'm all set this week. You're all set. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay, so I think I got everybody. Um, let's go to new business. Anyone have anything for new business? Commissioner Coyle, do you have anything? Do we have I don't need PowerPoint right. presentation of any business. I'm sorry. The community power plan presentation. Yeah, Great. we can do that. We can do that. So um, we're going to do um, Jim Hadley is here and he is going to, he was here last month, I believe. And we just started to scratch the surface of community power. We invited him back to get a little bit more detail. Um, and so he's here today. So he's going to do a give us a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman of the year. My name is Jim Hadley, and I currently serve as the volunteer chair of the Northwood Community Power Committee. I don't have enough handouts, but thank you. And I'm also expecting uh, Henry from Community Power. Okay. From here. All right. To come here shortly, but in the meantime, uh, <clears throat> when I was here last back in October 26th, I think it was, I had asked uh, the commissioners to look into joining community power. And if you look at this card here um, on the background page, the middle, it's going down, it shows Sheshire County. And these are the towns so far that have joined other than Arizona. And what that does, rather than a town having to develop their own community power plan with volunteers, et cetera, it has to go to the Public Utilities Commission. If Rocky and County joins, this is a $250 annual membership. And then any town that hasn't yet joined in Rocky and County and they're going through or could join under the so I also gave you the last one copy of the towns in Rockingham County, number of households, etc. And I compare the down source rates. So right now it's 13.18, I think, and community power is 10.9%. So uh, the worksheet just shows Eversource when they raised their rates back in January of 23, it went up 20 something percent or even more. And then when they reduce their rate every six months, they get new rates. And starting August of 23, it went down. So it, the average cost was $157 per household as opposed to $206. So all the towns in Rockingham County, just the housing units alone. We're going to save about $40 million. You know, sticking with Eversource for that two, six month period. So, um, what community power will do, it'll give you lower rates, customer choice, local control, and possibly clean energy. So, what we're looking at is um, Rockingham County to assist the other towns. There's eight towns that have municipalities that have so far had there. Community power plans approved by the Public Utilities Commission. And I show those in bold on this worksheet. So this would give the smaller towns the opportunity to get lower rates as well. And for those towns that haven't joined, it would be the least at the least resistance. Like I'm a committee of one right now. I think I mentioned that last time I was here. I thought before I select for a couple of times, I'm still a committee of one. So this would allow us to at least move forward and not have to develop the plan and get it moved by Public Utilities Commission. So as of yesterday, I checked the docket with the Public Utilities Commission and Town of Plasto is the only one that has something tended to get planned before the Public Utilities Commission. So this would be a big help to the smaller communities that are often enjoying. And I'll leave the view as that. There's a joint powers of agreement for community power. That's, that's just a copy. And I think I emailed to a month or so ago a copy of Cheshire County's community power plan 
and it was approved by the county delegation. So I'll leave that with you. And then Henry hopefully will be the Oh, okay. I already have a And then um, when Henry comes, he'll go through the the actual overview of how to develop the plan and get it approved. So okay. Um, and I noticed you do have public comment. I just want to mention Northwood. They announced yeah. the tax rate yesterday. Yeah, as you do. Well, it was good news and not so good news. The good news was Rocky and County's tax rate went down 9.2%. And the municipal tax rate went up 25%. So I want to thank the commissioners and the department heads for their due diligence on, yeah. on, on yeah. the budget. Yeah, the numbers are fantastic from the county over the last four years. Basically, basically, not funded. But I did notice eight communities actually their taxes, the county tax was actually went down. Um, so I, I, I mean, it's kudos to the county. Yeah, well, I went down with 9.2% in the county. Good. Our local education tax went up. So I can't really figure that out. The, oh, the, the local side? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, not the local, the state education side. Yep, so I was just telling the commissioner I'm going to do early on that. Last year, the state actually gave all the communities school money, but this year they didn't. It's, it was a one-time thing, so you're gonna you're gonna see a spring. So every community in the state is gonna have that on the state education side. It's a big ball round of Okay, Commissioner Coyle had her hand up. Um, I just had a couple questions, but I don't know. I don't want to interrupt if you're depending on where you are in your presentation. So if you'd oh. like to, no, go ahead. Okay, so who manages the program? Would uh, we be community managed or yeah. is it? Go ahead. It, it, it's self funded. It doesn't cost, it wouldn't cost Rockingham County any cost. And it's managed by Community Power of New Hampshire, a nonprofit organization. They would, you know, notify the utility. And then you know they would find out who all the customers are, and then the customers would have the option to either opt in or opt out of, of this program. And the only time that a, a county or a municipality would go ahead and launch a program would be if the rates were less than what either Unitil or Eversource or New Hampshire Coal Okay. And then so for cat. County members, so towns or you know, you have that list of Exeter, Portsmouth, Rye are already operating, New Market and Stratum are starting. How does it work for those communities? Would they opt out or would they be rolled into the the county program if we did this? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Henry from Community Power, but I believe if a if a municipality goes ahead and approves it, either the governing body, selectmen or town council in the um, town meeting vote, then within 30 days or 45 days, each resident and small business in that municipality would get a notice to either opt in or opt out of the program. So on, on that particular note, so the town of Derry has voted, they're using um, a company called Standard Water. Yeah. They voted already, so the town itself is already set up. Um, and, I, and I do see Portsmouth there. I don't know, uh, Commissioner Coyle, what, what the city is doing, if it's very similar. Seems like some of the larger communities may have been ahead of this, um, this but yeah. smaller communities probably will benefit from it. Um, and, you know, I guess the question really becomes is, you know, who do you use as the the company. Yeah. So if the county is to set up and we use community power, uh, that means anybody, any of the other towns would either have to, if they join the county's program, they would be under community power. Or they probably would have the option to do things themselves if they set up. Am yeah. I correct? Yes. Yeah. So um, I, I, it's interesting as, as Commissioner Coyle pointed out, Portsmouth, Rye, and Exeter um, says it's launched already. I know Derry's there. Um, and my understanding is obviously the more people that the more people that are involved with let's say community power, the, the better buying power leverage they would have. And and um, 
And I think each company is sort of different. As you mentioned, Community Power is a nonprofit, which which is nice on its own. And I don't think Standard Power is they're, they're a for profit. Um, and they're buying their their power in blocks, I don't know, six months or, or longer. I don't know. So it's it's all different. And I, I that was the question that I had, which was very similar. You know, what obligation does the county, Rockingham County, have if we were to form this? This to rule. What's our obligation? Well, let me turn it over to Henry. I'm right up over here. That's yeah, actually, you can sit right here if you want. Apologize, I heard the cumulative We started, they started early. Yeah, we were early. <laughs> yeah, I'm late. So, um, yeah, I'm Henry Heron and I work for Community Power Coalition New Hampshire. This is a nonprofit that was established by uh, counties, cities, and towns in the state of New Hampshire for the specific purpose of providing community power service, uh, currently servicing 14 or 15 um, programs across the state, about 80,000 electric customers. Um, and they're here on behalf of the coalition to extend an invitation to Rockingham County and the commissioners um, to become a member of the organization, to uh, participate in its services for uh, planning for and launching a program should you choose to do so. I have a, a little bit of a presentation. I don't know if we need to go through all of the 101s, but what would be most appropriate for them? Um, I mean, I think a lot of us are, it's a, it's a new understanding, so maybe you can do to share the basics. Okay. I've, I've, I've got one-on-one -on -one kind of questions, so yeah, that's please right. really yeah. start from the beginning. So I'm sorry, I did send late yesterday, I apologize for the way some slides. I don't know if we can put them there, but I, I have a couple of printouts. So just... Um, oh, I think I've got This is the one with Kevin Doyle's in it. <laughs> but um yeah, so I guess I could I can start with the top and really just I yeah. don't need to lecture, but we can have a conversation jump in as we go and uh, is it? see what this is. Okay, we got there it is. Great. Layla's been up on the screen. I do still have one quick question. If the county opted in, would that make all the all the households within the county eligible automatically, or would individual towns still have to pursue that? That's a great question. That's probably really the main question. Um, so, technically, under legislation, this county could implement a program and automatically switch all the default electric customers into that program in all of the towns. That's not how we do it. Cheshire is the one example of one that's up and running. And what they did is they implemented a program and then like that, any customer could choose to come in. So it becomes available to every customer, which is a, a good value. That's It makes it a much more quickly available to any customer. And any town um, could, by vote of their select board, the local governing body, vote to uh, enroll all the customers. To say all of our customers are now going to have the default provided to the Rocky Dam program. So it makes it, it, it's a more streamlined model. Any individual talent they want to do this, and this probably has been discussed, but they have to yeah. develop their own plan, go through an approval process, go through a regulatory process, go to town meeting. Well, and, that, and that's why it's just, you, you actually happen to have like three chairmen of boards of selectmen in this room that's as right. well. And, yeah. and I, I look at it as like, if you did this and this automatically makes it available to the citizens of the town where we don't have to go through a separate process. I think that's fantastic. They can voluntarily opt in. Um, and it seems like it could be a benefit to the county to offer that if they. Yeah. That. So just to let you know from so this happened in Barry, maybe about four months ago. The big question in Gary, the seven councils have full control of the development would be done or anything. But um, the big debate was whether we were going to do an opt in or, or an opt out for our consumers. And that was where there was a lot of um, back and forth. You know, some people just don't like the the opt out, like you're gonna switch everybody automatically and they, you know, and uh and then or let them opt in. The issue becomes and correct me if I'm wrong is, is you get more leverage when you have more people in it. And I sort of equated it to um, the uh, when you go grocery shopping and you look at the unit price, no one really looks at the unit price. Maybe some people do. They look at the bottom line price, right? Like for instance, you open up your electric bill and you look at, you know, the two the two parts of your electric bill, the service and and the you know what you're paying for power. Most people don't. They just look at the bottom line. 
So in Derry, we took we took the we're switching everybody in the town of Derry into the new standard power. And if you you know if a consumer wants to opt out, then they'll default back to Eversource because we felt that it was we were getting a lower rate, you know. So and everybody I mean, who's gonna complain about getting a lower rate, but it's a sensitive issue politically, you know. Some people have very strong feelings whether you do that. Mr. Brother? I'd like to request that Henry give us the presentation right from the start, where it feels like we're starting in the middle. And I think everybody, anybody, the six people who are going to watch this video might be interested in really the 101. I think we're starting in the middle. I don't, I, I, I've got like really basic questions that maybe you'll answer, like how is it organized and you know, who profits and, you know, where do you buy, you know, but I, I'd like, I, if you don't mind, Mr. Oh, Chair, no, no. I think it would be great if yes, you sir, gave us the full um, presentation and then we can pepper you with questions. So I have fun. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll try to move through the materials and, and if there's something that comes up as we go, I'm happy to chat about it uh, or we can talk at the end. Um, and the, I'll, I'll sort of dive right in with the, the first slide after this title slide. Um, or maybe before that, let's just pause on this title slide. So this is a photo of the annual membership meeting in the Power Coalition New Hampshire. So currently there are 50 cities, towns, and counties that are members. That doesn't mean they're all selling power. Um, about 14 or 15 of them are have operating programs. The others are in the planning stages. Um, but the the real the purpose of this organization is to have an uh, a nonprofit created by the cities and towns, accountable to those cities and towns. These are uh, actually there's the county commissioner right there's the green hat um, from Treasure County, but these are county commissioners, uh, folks from select boards, city councils, municipal staff who are the membership. They uh, elect the board from among themselves. So the board is um, governed by the cities and towns. So it's really accountability and transparency are key aspect of this. And they are, you know, we're subject to the right to know law, just as all of our municipal members are, all our books and meetings are open to the public. Next slide. Um, so 101, uh, there was legislation, bipartisan, signed by Governor Sununu, uh, and it allowed for cities, towns, and counties to become what we call the default electricity provider. Um, so that's the bulk of power purchase. Um, where you can achieve the economy of scale as Trader and Trail described. Um, the utility company is always going to own the grid, deliver the power, earn their revenue on that um, side of things. So they don't lose out anything. They can see the right service and then customers can have the lower rates and, and um, more energy choices. So the RSA is 53E, RSA 53E. And you know, it's a voluntary program. Nobody has to participate, and there's no tax monies associated with the program. It's all paid for out of the electric bill. Um, payments. Next slide. So this is uh, members, um, and it's growing uh, quickly. But um, I'll just note it's about 80, 85,000 customers. Uh, and so the scale is larger than Unitil or Liberty, which are the smaller two investor and utilities in the state. So considerable buying power um, to, to help bring the costs down for all of the customers. And again, the revenues associated with these programs, they're, they're sort of controlled by the, the nonprofit and by the members. And we'll talk about that on the other slide. But you can see in green about 14 or 15 live programs. We'll have another nine or 10 launching in March. And then the red colored towns are preparing for a town meeting or a town council or a, uh, a local Legislative body approval. Next slide. So, Rockingham County, here we are. Uh, and this is like a zooming in a little bit. It sounds like this was discussed, but you've got Exeter, Rye, Portsmouth. They're operating, they're selling power, they're realizing savings. Um, New Rock and Stratum are going to come online this March. And there's a number of other towns, Atkinson, Kensington, Hampton Falls, that are in the planning phase. It's actually not shown on this map. There's a couple of towns um, that are not affiliated with our nonprofit. They're going with the state of power or a private firm. Um, and so there may be other towns that are in some phase of exploring this on this map. I'm not sure. Who. Uh, but I'll pause here for a second. So the, the benefit for a county program is all those towns colored in white um, 
it sort of can streamline the access and the benefits to all the individual customers in those towns who one by one by one might want to choose to opt into a lower rate. And as we discussed, any one of those towns at the select board level, a select board vote could then default to the entire customer base into the program. So a town select board can choose or an individual customer can choose. Just a quick question on that. Uh, I don't think they drop the if I don't ask it altogether. What if one town does the opt in, such as Derry, but one town does the opt out? It, it, it's a different, I mean, it could be different in the individual town. So, what this, the town would be voting with regard to a potential county program would be uh, an opt out. They would say, we're going to give this to all our customers on an opt out basis uh, because where the county establishes the program, it's already an opt-in opt for everyone. So when you create the program, it is an opt-in, any customer can opt-in. Um, and then uh, the town level decision-making would be, do we want to do nothing, or do we want to create an opt-out program? Okay. So, yeah, I have questions about that, too. Um, so if the county were to adopt this, do we have to have it as opt-out I mean, are we forcing this to each of the towns, mm -hmm. to each of the residents? It's a, it's and a, they have to opt out if they don't like it? It's or a, can we do it the other way? So you have a lot of options under the law. Technically, you could implement a program and switch every default customer in the entire county. We don't advise that. That is technically allowed under legislation, but we are not advising that. That is not how it was implemented in Cheshire County. Are we allowed to do the exact opposite, though? Make it available so that anyone can opt in. That's correct. That is how you would implement it. You would, make, you would create a program and then make it opt in, and any individual customer can choose to participate. So if uh, Plasto decides to adopt the program, do they also have the opportunity to just make it opt in? Or it was sounded like you were describing that they had to all opt out, that they would automatically get placed in there. I just want to be clear that right. there's choices. Here the town, we... There are choices. And on the town level, there's a couple of choices. A town can do it itself, Plast Out can do it itself. Uh, they could create a committee, develop a plan, go through public meetings, town meeting, regulatory. Um, and then they would have class applicant power. Or the town could, uh, in that program, I mean, just as we discussed in Derry, technically they could do it opt-in or opt-out. We haven't seen any opt-in programs in the state. We've had the opt-in option for 20 years and nobody ever used it. Essentially, the opt-in option, it, it's not a viable approach to this. There's, you don't achieve the scale. Uh, you don't have to buy in power. Um, and I'll just, maybe I'll spend another second on this opt-in, opt-out question. Part of the, I think what's helpful for, for customers to understand is everybody is currently in an opt-out. They have Eversource as their utility company. They can opt out of that. They can go into the marketplace and shop for another provider. Um, so everyone's in an opt-out program right now. And what this does is this adds another default option, another opt-out option. To right. Yeah, just but to the extent that I guess my concern is with a opt out that, you know, to the extent that it conflicts with communities that already have um, community power, but maybe with a private broker, then we're adding a burden to those places that may not, you know, they have everybody has to take an extra step of opting out, whereas mm -hmm. Um, for because we're doing the county program as a county wide 37 communities, don't don't you think that this would be an application where we would get the scale needed for an opt in? Yeah, I think it's a good point. So uh, and there's a couple of pieces there, maybe. So one for the town in green here, Exeter Portsmouth Ride, their program. Under the law, it's a, it takes priority. The, the municipal program takes priority over the county program. So if Rockingham set up a program, wouldn't would never affect the programs that already exist on the municipal level, and there's no reason to For the other towns, um, let's say Plastow, as mentioned, um, Plastow only 
the palace has the choice. Glasgow can choose to, to participate in the Rockingham program or not. Um, so it would have to be, there has to be an affirmative buy-in from the town, vote of their town, select board to participate in the program. It, it, there's no like imposing of any, we, it, it's designed very carefully to ensure this is available as an option to any town that wants it, but there's no imposing anything on anything. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so there's a two part. So for if we, so it kind of disregards any of the communities that already have it, just to sum up what you said. But in order to implement this on a county level, the towns have to opt into, they have to vote to participate in the program and then their constituent, their residents are automatically in unless they opt out. Yeah, and, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and skip ahead a few slides because I have a couple of slides on this. So we just and maybe move slowly so I can I'll talk about the board and the, the rates and et cetera, but I'll kind of skip ahead one more, one more. Uh this is what it looks like in Cheshire. One more slide. Okay, so why do this at a county level? Uh it can streamline it for towns. It takes a lot of the administrative regulatory burden off um and the similar volunteer capacity. And especially if you maybe have one or two towns that are interested, they could plug in with you here at the county level to be a part of the process. Um, and it, it ensures all electric customers in the entire county have the option to save on their electric bills um, from the get-go. And on the next slide, I'm going to talk about the process. Next slide, please. Oh, okay. So uh, let me look like we're frozen. Maybe. Mm -hmm. oh. One more. This it looks like it's changing. Yeah, it's not uh, yeah. <clears throat> Well, I can. Yeah, yeah we, we have that. I can talk through this from. Yeah, so I'm looking at. Can you unmute? Thanks, Kate. <laughs> so there's four steps. Uh, if the county were to choose to work with the coalition, um, you adopt our joint powers agreement. I'll share that document. That's the, uh, the nonprofit's corporate charter, sort of agreement among all the municipal members to participate in some way, small or large in the governance. Um, and that's a county commission. So you can adopt that agreement, and there's no charge withdrawn any time. It's just sort of becoming a member of the organization. Um, you'd also establish a committee. This is required under the state law. Um, so step two is that committee, which we would support fully and resource fully, um, would prepare an electric degradation plan. Again, we have templates that have been proven out through the regulatory process. We work with you to make some minor customizations to that template and hold two public hearings on the plan before uh, the legislative body of the county, the county delegation, will vote to adopt that plan. And I think it's a good opportunity to make sure everyone in the county, a lot of the county leadership is aware of what's going on, has the opportunity um, to you know, bring it back to their towns. Uh, so now you're ready to go. The Public Utility Commission will approve that plan in a 60-day period, and you can watch and create this program. Um, so now Rockingham Community Power exists, and um, if we skip one slide ahead, um, and one more slide, this is what it now looks like for us. Now, so you now have Rockingham Community Power. Now that governing by select board of the town can vote to join, and um, the town could appoint a representative to you know, a body, we form a committee or a governance body uh, to just have oversight and communication. Uh, with regard to the program. So it's very simple from the town's perspective. All the work has been done through our support at the county level. And then for an individual town, it's a select board question. Do you want to participate in this program or do you not want to? And uh, that's up to the town select teams. So if I could just ask the same question again, because I'm still a little bit confused. I get it up to the point that the towns decide they want to offer to join the program. Do the towns have the option to make it opt in or opt out at that level? You, you've given me the impression that it's to some disadvantage to only allow to, to set it up as opt in. And I don't understand 
the disadvantage to the consumer. I only understand the advantage to your, is it a 501c3 group? Yeah, I was four actually. And it's it's interesting because it's also created under um, the New Hampshire law, RSA 53A, uh, which is uh, agreements between municipalities. So it's a, it's a municipal organization. Okay, so we join, a, uh, a town decides they want to participate. My question is, do they have an option of how they participate and what would weigh the factors yes. of how they do that? Yes, their option is to either do nothing, in which case every individual customer has an opt-in option. Any customer can opt into the program. That's if the town council does nothing or the select board does nothing, or the town select board can vote to create an opt-in participation vote to say, we want all of our customers default to be this cheaper rate through Rocky Hill community. Okay, but you said do nothing. That's right. They have to join. No, they, the cus any customer in Rockingham County, you could have you know, any individual, any household, any, well, any, household well, any business. So once Rockingham County sets it up, yes, it's set up so that anybody in the county may opt in if they would like to automatically. Correct. So the opt out program, which puts everybody on that automatically, is only if a town select board decides or uh, maybe they have to have a full town meeting vote decides that they want to be opt out and put everybody in correct and they don't have to have a town meeting vote to opt everyone into the county yes, they want. the benefit being the more people that are under this program the better buying power they have to buy lower electricity rates and at any given time any individual customer or client can opt out at any time. Right. Even if the town of Salem said, everybody's going to default to community power, and someone said, I don't like that, they can opt out and just default back to well, liberty or any source of whoever that is. But remember, it's a scale. -in. The more people that are involved, the better price. It'd be you get. potential lower rates if more people get involved yeah. but that's just that's an overall kind of thing right and like i had mentioned um with major bashaw when he brought it up it, you know it's a political thing and you got to talk about that it's a, it's a political decision you know some people like it some don't but at the end of the day you know but if you're trying to lower electricity rates for everybody can, can a up. town or the county be involved in more than one program like this like you, you appear to have competition, uh, standard power. Maybe there's some other energy coalitions that I'm not aware of. Do you have competition? There are a couple of firms, Standard Power is one of them, that uh, provide community power service. Are there any other nonprofits? Yeah, no, that's my knowledge. Gotcha, really. Commission for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, based on our organization, we would, if we voted to participate in a community power program, we would probably have to go out to bid for the management thereof. That was the question that I was thinking about too, because of our, you know, the way we are we're set up as a county government entity, we've even better though, put it out. Even though there's no price tag really put on it, um, we'd have to see, I guess we'd still have to do an RFP and you know, ask anybody that's interested in being this, um, Source that we have to do it without, I would think. So I agree with that commissioner. Voice that I was thinking the same thing. Is there any other questions? So it's no, yeah. I there's one more, there's a slide before this slide that I think is I want to make sure we, we talk through. So let's say you set up the county program and then a town select board votes to join. What happens in that town uh, at least 30 days before? the program launches every single electric customer in that town would receive a letter in the mail it would say rockingham community power welcome to rockingham community power here's our rate here's how much we're saving relative to your ever source rate or your units only uh and it would have the customer service information community power nh.gov uh, the email address the phone number customers can call they can get all the information they need about the program it's all in that letter and it's all online and then any customer can go to the website, call the phone number, learn about the program, or opt in, opt out, or opt up to a higher, a more clean energy product. So there's 30 days you have to have a public meeting 
uh, within 15 days of us sending that letter, they would support that. And then after the 30 day period, the next time that customer's meter gets read by the utility to process a monthly electric bill, they will get switched into the Rock Again Community Power Program. And then at any point after that, they can opt out anytime they want. There's no penalty for coming and going. Any customer can voluntarily come in and add the program. Um, but on launch, it becomes the new default for customers that take no action. Um, on the multiple uh, power programs, is that uh, would once we join, is it exclusive, or can we uh, could we sign an agreement with Standard Power with your group and another one, and then give everybody choices? So there's terms, if you were to sign up with Standard Power, you'd have a term or two, three year term, sign up with the coalition, we have a, a 36 month term. And I wanna be clear, it's it's not a 36 month rate because we're, one of the things that is an exclusive during that term. Well, yeah, once you're in, once you have agreed to buy power, take service for the for a certain term, then at the end of that term, you can go through another provider or there are you know, termination provisions. Okay, so it's one one firm at one option at a time. That's right. Um, the interesting thing, for instance, Eversource is typically probably one of the highest electric rates out of the five that we have. I know in Salem, they have Liberty, which is probably lower. Um, so I guess that conversation with the town council in Salem, they'd have to kind of look at, and, and, and for instance, in Derry, you know, I have, in Derry, I could split up the town in three different, yes, three different you companies that have this, you know what I'm saying? I have Eversource and then they have Liberty, and that's the tricky part. The only good thing is, is the, client, the customer at any time can opt out, they didn't like the rate. So you bought and you're buying in six month increments power, right? In yeah. six, and, I, and I, it's a good question. I want to unpack that. Real quick. Okay. Um, so we set rates every six months because the utility set rates every six months, but we actually have the flexibility to buy in the market periodically. So we actually have a portfolio of blocks of power. We buy a chunk here and a chunk there, and we layer this portfolio out over time. So that's one of our advantages to the utility pricing. Um, but yes, we are more or less buying power on short-term blocks at this point. Yeah, um, but you can buy power at any time. If you, you see a good deal out there, there. You're, gonna, you're gonna grab that, but you're saying that's right. setting rates is every single That's right, and if we actually go, I'm jumping around, but I think it's helpful if you go back a few slides, it might be, we're, I'm looking for slide number seven, or actually I'm looking for slide number six, if you would. Thank you. Um, so right now, Eversource on the far right has a 12.58 cent rate with the gray bar. It's right in, but you can see it. And the community power rate is 10.9 cents. So there's there's good savings on the supply side now. Uh, and for those 80,000 customers across the state, it's been about $10 million in energy savings just since April or May um, of this year, really in the first year, starting in April or May. Um, so that's how the rate compares it. And the thing I want to note is uh, this week or next week, Eversource is going to announce rates for the next period. It might, I don't think they've done it yet, but it's its any day now. Um, so they're going to change their rate February 1 through the end of July next year. And then we'll shortly after they announce their rates, we'll announce our rates. And you, so you're in a good place where you'll get to see what's the next period going to look like. Um, well, let me ask, I'm going to put this out there. So, there's no guarantee that you're going to be lower. However, it's most advantageous for community power to be lower, right? Right. So you're doing everything you can to be always under, let's say, I'm just using that source here. You're going to be, that's the way it's going to benefit people, right? So you, you guys are watching these rates. You're buying power when I said it's cheapest, but there's no guarantee. There could be a time where yeah, you know, you're locking in a rate that's actually higher than the source, right? It, it's it's possible that 
you know, there may be points in time where the rate is higher than ever. So it's, it's unlikely. And on average, year over year, we've got an advantage where we're, we're most likely going to save customers money. But it's because a couple of things. But, you know, the organization is completely member driven. So our board is all, you know, folks from counties and towns and, and cities. So the interests are of those towns and cities. It's nonprofit. There's not profit motive there. So the interests are all sort of aligned. Um, and then we have certain advantages in the market as well. And if that scenario ever happened, obviously customers at any time, individual customers, businesses just say, I'm off the night. Right. And they they default back to what they have. So really, I mean, it's so it's just being, I think it's more of the consumer being aware of their bill is what it boils down to. Like I had mentioned earlier, I open up my electric bill and I'm sorry, I'm one of these people. I open up my electric bill, I'm like, yeah, pay it. I write the check. I'm not looking at how much of the transmission rate is and how much is, you know, I'm not looking at those um, details per se. And can I, can I shave off a couple of cents here or there? I'm not doing that. And maybe I think with this process, it makes more people aware of, um, um, you know, if they, if they want to make savings, they can make savings. Um, that's number one. And then number two, you don't get into it with the green stuff, but I don't want to complicate things more than right. they are right, at this point. But. I just had a quick question because I'm I'm a little bit confused. The county, the complex, we have to go out to RFP for our electricity. And we do. We've not used Eversource for probably 10 years. Mm -hmm. We have Constellation right now. So we have a fixed contract with Constellation. They give us their best deal. They offer us one year, two year, three year, whatever. And we sign up for it. We still pay Eversource for the transmission because they're the only game in town here at Rockingham County. How do how do we fit into this scenario? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so it's up to the county. Um, the second part of what you said is always the same. So you're always going to pay Eversource for transmission. You mentioned with us. But now you can choose. Either you pay RFP it or... I mean, what you, what I can say what Cheshire did, if that's helpful. So Cheshire County was in a constellation contract for the county facilities. Yep. Um, and then that contract expired this past November, and they have 40 electric accounts, and they just took those 40 electric accounts and they moved them into the Cheshire community power rate. Um, so you might want to RFP for that. Uh, Cheshire didn't, but I think we we have a statutory requirement which is more than five thousand, right? That's well, where I'm getting. Well, there's time, a but... bid waiver. Yeah, um, they did a bid waiver and now it's 10, but they did a bid waiver probably okay. to just put in. I'm just guessing. Yeah, if so, they didn't go out the bid, and obviously it was way more than five thousand dollars to that point, it was five thousand dollars for a bid threshold. Right. They must have done a bid waiver. Probably. And I might not be, I may be not up to speed with all the details of their process for moving those accounts in. Okay, so so how this if, if we were to support this plan and have Rockland County plan by default, are we having to as a rate pay ourselves as far as the county facility having to go in and you know again like you said right now we have constellations would by default the county heading this program have to be you know paying just we could only go with you know community power no you're you can do you can have it if so you know all all the the so it's more you really a thing you know, of letting okay. the businesses and residents have it available to them right it's okay at right. the end of the day the customer if it's a county facility if it's a household it's a business the customer always gets to choose so yeah your your county facilities are not obligated to participate but the way we choose is only by our people Right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I have two more questions regarding the organization itself. How many paid employees does the does community power have? Uh, we have four. We have four, but I'm gonna then we have a lot of vendors. So I'm gonna go back to slide. Uh, sorry, we're jumping around, but this is be a great question. Slide five, please. So what is the board, 20 members of the board, elected other members, we talked about that. On the right is more of the, the operations. So Brian Callan, that's his, his, our CEO. He was vice president of power supply for the electric co-op. So he's got 20 years of public power utility experience, buying and selling, you know, utilities got power. And he's running the company. Um, and then on staff, we have myself, I'm the director of member services, we've got um, a director of administration, uh, we have a director of regulatory and legislative affairs, and we're going to have a couple more staff next year. So it's four this year, and we might bring a couple more on board next year. 
in so, addition to our staff, we have outside legal, accounting, banking and financial services, and we have a couple of firms on the operations side. So Ascend Analytics is advising on how we purchase electricity, how we engage in the ISO uh, New England power markets and procure. And then Calpine is doing our customer service, our contact center, utility billing, uh, we've got some community engagement with folks. So uh, I've somebody might have met Andrew Hatch. And you also have circuit riders. That's a separate organization, but okay. we, we collaborate with okay. them. So there are, there's a there's a good team of professional vendors involved in this. And and just to speak of this a little bit more, so we're talking about a large volume of procurement. We're talking about this year 50 million in revenue for the electricity sales, next year maybe 100 million in revenue. That revenue is controlled by this board of directors and by the nonprofit. The vast majority of that, you know, 85, 90% of that is paying for the cost of power supply. There is a little sliver, two or three percent, that's paying for our overhead, our staff, a couple of offices. Um, and then there are net revenues. There's an additional portion of the rate that capitalizes a reserve fund. We're, we're putting uh, net revenue into a reserve fund for future benefit for the communities. We can build the organization, we can become financially stable, we can have credit rating, the balance sheet. Um, and we can protect against rate shock. We can we can protect against future rate changes. So again, part of the it, this is the detail getting into the details, but part of this is about transparency. How, where is this large quantity of revenue associated with power size going, and how is it contributing to community benefit long term? So, can you outline that for us in more specific terms? Not at this moment, but can you? Because my next question was. What percentage of the gross income is going towards administration? Mm -hmm. And you touched on that, and it's divided between salaries, vendor right. costs, and and you're saying you have some kind of capital reserve fund. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think we need it right at this minute, but I would As like follow up. I could send a our financial report. It's it, it'll break out uh, exactly that, and yeah, we have that. So let me take a minute. So that we would know what the percentage. For administration, right? And like, be compared to what you're actually buying the power box. That's right. Because obviously you're buying it for less, but it's there are a lot of costs involved in buying power. Right. But being a nonprofit, obviously you have to pay their overhead. Yeah, we don't call it profit; right. we call it administration. Exactly. No, but there's again, there's different. There's operating, which is very small. So our administrative or operating costs is a very small part of the rate. Yeah. But there's a, and then there's the power costs. And there's a third piece, and that's this reserve. So we are we are building up a capital reserve fund, or we'll call it a real reserve fund, and the, we have a target, and it's 120 days of operating cash. And that's just to ensure all our bases are covered. And uh, over the next five years, we'll build up to having 120 days of cash in the bank. Um, so you know we have our we have a good balance sheet. We have a good asset. We have lowering our we're lowering our financing costs, and we're ensuring the rate can remain low. For the, for the I'm just going to ask if I that. can't see her, um, Commissioner Coyle. Do you have any any other questions you want to ask? I can't see you. Not at this time. I'm just taking okay. it in. I, All right, Commissioner Gadu asked a number of questions I had, and I guess now it's like we need to uh, do some more research and. Overall, I think it's a, it seems like it has a lot of promise. Yeah. Commissioner, Thank could, you. Could, answered could I just ask questions. one question? Yeah, go ahead. Opting into a program like this, does this have any impact on communities that are engaging in solar production that they're then reselling to the grid? Does it give you a seat at the table or does it make community power a beneficiary of those proceeds? That's a great question. Um, so oh, in the short term, Folks who have a solar panel on their roof are doing that metering. Um, right now, they're not able to participate, and it's just a technical issue with utilities, and we need to get the right data from the utilities. So, when we when the town enrolls the folks who have solar panels, they just don't get it. And it stays exactly the same for them. In the future, that'll change. They'll be able to participate and do their same net metering, but as part of the Rockingham Community Power. And then, I mean, there's the the longer answer we would get into over time, there can be more uh, innovative rate offerings for customers. Net metering rates, time of use rates, rates for charging your electric vehicle at night and paying a discount. So there's more rates that can come. This is you know a couple of years out probably. Um, so the, those are all factors. And the, the final piece of this is development of a project. So some of the towns are very motivated. They've got a, a capped landfill. 
They want to put a megawatt or five megawatts of solar on it, and they want to sell that power into their community power bill. Um, again, that's not going to happen next year, maybe not the year after that, but the plans are beginning for actually developing local energy generators to supply. Yeah, because uh, specifically the county is looking at a five megawatt field, but then yeah, in Kingston, we're looking at a capital landfill five megawatt field. Does that, does that, does that, does that now put you at a seat at the table of decision making for that community uh, once they opt into that mm -hmm. or limit the town's ability to autonomously negotiate for those rates for that service? No, uh, the town can either pursue that project unilaterally for just its municipal accounts and facilities, and they can do that if they'd like, or now the town has an additional option, which is to pursue that facility in conjunction with community power so that the generation from that facility actually goes to the households in addition to just the county building or the town buildings. So it's just it's one more option of how to do it. They don't need to, we certainly couldn't interfere with the town's decision-making on that. All right, thanks. Yeah. Any more any more questions at all? Or it could be some good no. dive into the more detail on the other side. One more. Um just a quick question, sort of dovetailing with that. If we're selling so would the and maybe I'm just confused, but would the county because essentially with the solar rays, we're selling our power back to Eversource, right? So would the county itself have to opt out? Um, if, if for whatever facilities, yeah, I uh, I don't know that I know the exact answer to that. You have it's either you would just keep those accounts on the Eversource supply rate. Um, I think that's most likely what you would do. Um, if I was, you were saying if there was a solar array associated with that metering with the county buildings, yeah. well, would yeah. the contract to put one in? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so you're yeah. going to have zero electric bills in the next thing. No. I mean, pays for right. all the county contracts. So zero. Right. That's that's exciting. Um, yeah, you would pursue that. You would continue along with that project independent of this program. And so, so in this case. Really, we're just going to be the vehicle for other towns to be able to pick to, to use it. Basically, right. we don't necessarily have to use it. Yeah, right. That's, my yeah. but that's how I'm seeing that. That's my... No, that's true. Could you buy power from us? That's what's in the solar now. <laughs> that's what some of the towns are thinking about. How can we develop a solar array? And you know, feed that power into the portfolio in the program. So, because we probably will be much more efficient in supplying you energy once we're up and running than some firms that are built for profit, since we're built just well, to. Not only long. not only that, and he didn't really get into this, but I was at the presentation of the county infrastructure. There are options for people to pay even a little bit more for green energy. So if we were, you know, we were allowed to sell back our solar um, energy back to you, you're going to reset. You're going to repackage that as green energy that some clients choose to pay a little bit more because it's green energy, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's an option for a customer. A customer could go to the website and pick 100% green power and pay a little premium. So we could conceivably actually make more money than we would have just. Sending it back to MSOs. It could. There's a lot of options for how these programs can go. So when follow up, but I'll, I'll just send you know that more deep a little more detail. And um yeah, I understand there may need to be a, a solicitation process, but I'll go ahead and send our joint powers agreement yes. the document that I've oh, got it. Excellent. Um so yeah, don't need to send it. But um got it. Well, I'll give it and, and she can make copies for it. <laughs> and, and just another other uh, item in follow up. Okay. Uh, um, and then one last quick question. Um, so, being in dairy, wearing my dairy hat, I asked my town administrator what's going on with the standard power. And he said it's pulling it off right now because electric rates are very volatile. Is that what you're seeing in the market? Uh, electric rates are coming down. So, okay. so what happened was last week, Unitil announced its rate for the next six months. 
uh, starting in February, and it's 10.7 cents. So it's actually lower than what we've got right now. So we're going to change rates for the February period and we'll be forced down. But there's a, there's a lot of contention that's driving the price down right now. Interesting. Um, so it might be volatile in the sense that we were here and now we're here. But uh, yeah. Okay. Just curious. It might be hard for uh, for some firms to compete in a low price environment. That's how we say. Something else to think about. So, how many players are there out there? What is there's, I know, in addition to Standard Power, there's a firm for United Energy Logistics and Colonial Power. Um, and they're another firm. Yes. They have they work together. That's one. All right. Any other questions from anybody before we wrap it up? Yes. So, in my hometown of Sandown, we're involved with a private broker. So, we have a contract with them. We do want to get out of this. We need to be a fan. I don't know how to find better. Yeah, it's quite possible. You'd want to look at that. You'd want to see if there's a penalty or an exit fee, and that's for the town, the town accounts. I might right? understand. We just do our municipal right. Um, yeah, so we have side panels or? no, we have we had white column, but now they've changed a couple of times. We have another, but it is a private book, but we only do our town buildings. Mm -hmm. so I, I want to guess there's a penalty we get out. I it's quite possible. Oftentimes, there is. Thank you. Again, there, so there through that kind of arrangement, with this kind of arrangement, there would not be. Well, good. Uh, this is some really good information, I think. So thank you, gentlemen, for coming. The other thing is, is um, you said that we could, we'd have to form a group. You'd have to form a committee. And a <clears> town that decides to join, let's say we can set this up. Town decides to join, and you can actually have someone mm -hmm. be, like uh, Jim was talking about who he wants to be. With his uh, his community, he wants to be that uh, person that's uh, on that group. Is that typically how you can see it? it? It's a good way to have a good communication flow from that county to the different towns. Um, and then you know, the, the law requires you set up a committee. So uh, if there is other folks, if there's folks like Jim, it's great to have somebody from a different town who's eager to potentially participate just in, in the room. Yeah. And I did send uh, Layla. Copy of the Cheshire County yeah. community plan. Yeah. And you, you mentioned they have templates. Yeah, so we'll we provide a template. So then last question for me would be you would mention this was would be on 91A. That's right. Okay, so who's responsible for the 91A? If someone requests information, are they coming to the county if we set this up, or are they coming to community power? Uh because I because I don't really control the minutes. If it's if the county's responsible for 91A requests. Then we need to make sure that we get the minutes of all this stuff. And no, we would be if they, I mean, if, you know, we've got a board and we've got seven committees at the board, and each of those meetings is publicly noticed, and each of those meetings has minutes, and they're public. So if it's associated with any of that, uh, that would certainly help us. So the 91A request would come to you guys, not us. I, I can't guarantee that no, no one's ever going to. Send you a 91A request about okay. this, but but yeah, we would do the vast majority of the administrative. Work. Okay, Commissioner Coyle. Just under 91A, you don't have a duty to procure documents that don't don't exist within your so your um, record keeping. So we wouldn't have a duty to procure any records of minutes of community power <laughs> that we don't have or uh, that we didn't generate. So. We just direct them to a 91A request to go to community power to get. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. That was very, very, uh, you learned a lot. Thank you. And um, I, I'll just reply. I believe the root of corresponding, I can send you yeah. right to the yeah. 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 Thank you very much. It was very uh, insightful. Great discussion. You're done. You're going to be talking more. Several days. Thank you. Take care. Um. Okay. We have non publics. Yeah, well, first on so the public comment. Yeah, it's, public 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 comment. Comment. it's time. I'm going to ask you to talk public comment. Public you want to say something? Yes. This is the time to say it. I just want to let you folks know I'm thrilled to be here today. Uh, I want to stay engaged, and it's a nice show. Oh, a nursing home in December and January is pretty warm, so I'm going <laughs> to try and come in here on Thursdays. Uh, obviously, I'm going to rerun for the position of uh, District 3, so 
I'm excited. I've been watching the building across the street. I'm very excited. And uh, there's a reason why Rockingham is looked at for the other nine uh, counties. And you folks have still kept us number one. So keep Rockingham strong. And I'm glad to see everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Tom. Um, okay, now we'll uh, take a motion to go into non public. I move to enter into non-public pursuant to 91A colon three. Um, I, how many do we have, Allison, that you have? I think um, we have the follow-up one um, and to last week's discussion and then uh, the sheriff's one too. Okay, so at this point, and we also have one with Department of Correction. So I think we should start with uh, the sheriff's department since they're there and then um, superintendent, I will, um text you when we're ready for you is that okay i think it's okay yeah all bye right. everybody so um uh, pick them out who who do you want so we have we want to uh, see everybody oh great thank you thank you oh it's going to go on the motion for some photos yes yes thank you layla Okay, and staying court again. Okay, Commissioner Coyle. Yes, I told you. See, we are out of non-public, and we had uh, three non-public sessions, and I moved to seal the minutes indefinitely in all three instances because uh, the divulgence of the information could render a proposed action ineffective at this point. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Um, on the motion, Commissioner Gaudu? Yes. Commissioner Coy? Yes. And I vote yes. And there's only one more motion left. Motion to adjourn. Whoa, he beat you too. <laughs> second. 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 Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye, yeah. Aye. 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 Aye.